Hi everyone and welcome back to our wind series. In the last episode we got our analytical system working and blowing the wind through our scene. However, let's make it a bit more useful and create a wind controller which can control the direction of our wind and its strength all from a single actor. So let's go ahead and show you how to achieve this using material parameter collections and Niagara parameter collections. Let's go. So here's where we left off last time with our Niagara wind blowing blissfully as it could be. But we wanted to make it more controllable and uh, by using a wind controller actor. So we're going to create a new actor. And it's going to be called, it's a new actor. And we're going to call it BP wind controller. And what this wind controller is going to contain is very simple. It's just going to have an arrow on it so we can determine which way it's going a lot easier. So I'm going to go to the components, add the arrow. We'll change the color of it, you can do. I might make it like blue for wind. There we go. And what I'm going to do is make this arrow contain basically how powerful the wind is and how, what its kind of rotation will be here too. So let's write about just rotation first of all. So the rotation of this actor is going to determine the rotation of all the wind in the game currently. So what I need to do is create a material parameter collection to manipulate this. So you're going to go ahead, go to materials, and you'll choose material parameter collection. If you don't know what a material parameter collection is or an MPC, it is basically a global parameter collection that can be used for all your materials. But it can also be used for Niagara. So let me show. So I'm going to call this MPC wind. And I'm going to open this up. And all you've got to do in here to find the variables, you've got two types. You've got scalars, which are your floats, and vectors, which are, you know, are your vectors. So I'm going to go to vector, and we're going to add one in here called wind direction. And the default value of this will make x or r1. There we go. Next, I'm going to go to construction script. And we're using the construction script because I want to be able to see this changing in real time whilst I'm editing the game. But we're also going to be adding a new thing into the event graph as well to manipulate it if we want to do it during the game as well. First of all, in the construction script, I need to get the material parameter collection. So I'm going to do set parameter collection uh, vector parameter collection variable. There we are. And you know you've got the right one because it will say collection as a drop down box. Click on this and we should see our MPC wind. And plug that into the construction script. And the parameter name should now appear in the drop down for the second one. And the parameter value for this is going to be our actor's rotation. So get actor, in fact when we get actor forward vector, we'll use that way instead. And I want to convert that into a color by just dragging it over to the color pin and it will convert it for me. That's it. That's all I do. Next, we need to make it so that the wind system can read from that material parameter collection. And the way it does that is we have to create a new asset in our FX. You go to advanced, and you'll see in here Niagara parameter collection. We click on this. We do NPC. We do wind. Open this up, and here it's going to ask you to source a material collection. And we're going to just choose our wind one. It's going to copy those values from the material collection over into our Niagara uh, system. I can now close this. And now I want to give that parameter collection to my Niagara system. And we, don't, we do that is we're going to go into the parameters. And on the left hand side, go down to Niagara parameter collection. Choose the plus button, and you should see your NPC wind, wind direction. Choose this, and there you go. We've now hooked the material parameter collection to the Niagara parameter collection which is to the Niagara system. So all I've got to do now is use this wind direction to change the rotation or initial mesh rotation of our Niagara system. So all I've got to do in here is go to my particle spawn and choose initial mesh orientation. And rather than choosing random, do that. We're going to change that to none. 
I'm going to go to rotation, turn that on. And from the drop down, we're going to give it that wind direction. So if I search for wind direction, we're going to see a problem. It's not going to appear. And the reason why it's not going to appear is because this is technically known as a color node, right? So I need to convert it to a vector. So we can go to vector and type in color. And you'll see make vector from linear color RGB. Choose this. And now we're going to choose the color here. Now we should be able to find our wind direction. It is. Well, save. And I want this to also be the same on our particle spawn here too. So we're going to right click on this, copy, and go to this one, and paste it onto there too. Now, when you first add the initial mesh orientation, it's going to be set to random. We don't want it to be random, obviously. We're going to change that to orient to vector. So choose that option there. And now we've got orientation vector of set to one. Now I want this to use my wind direction. Now I can't get it straight away because this is actually a linear color. So if I were to search for it in the drop down, it won't come up. So what I need to do is convert the linear color to a vector. So let's type in our keywords here, vector, color. And you're going to see a few options, but one that's going to highlight straight away is make vector from linear color RGB. That sounds exactly like what we want to use. So I'm going to click on this and choose it as an option. And in the color now, we should be able to find our wind direction. And then I'm going to save that. And I'm going to copy that module over to the other emitter. File, save that. Okay, so now if I drag in my wind controller and rotate it around, you can see the wind is now changing direction based upon whichever way this controller is facing. And that's not just this one Niagara system, it will use it for all of them. So you can sync them all up. And what's really handy about this is that it's using the material permanent collection, which means that other things that are using wind like grass and bushes as an offset, we can add the lead, actually add our parameter collection to that as well and make that also blow in the same direction. The next on the change is the velocity or the speed of our wind, which basically is going to change how many of these we're going to see coming through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it use a value on our wind controller. So wind controller, we're going to go to variables. I'm going to do wind strength. And I'm going to make that a float. And we're probably going to make this a slider uh, with a clamp. So we don't get any crazy values coming out of this. So slider range, we're going to go from zero, so we have no wind, to a maximum of, let's say, uh, let's go for four. And zero to four as well for the value. Okay, and we're gonna make that one editable so we can edit it in the world. And to make it more visually appealing to what we can see here, I'm gonna take the arrow here and I'm going to set the scale of the arrow. Actually, can I just do the length of the arrow? Yeah, arrow length, we'll just do the arrow length. Set arrow who length. And I'm going to set it to the same value as our wind strength, which by default is going to be set to one. So in the world, if I go and drag the wind strength out like this, we should see it coming through. Okay. Obviously, that's not the right length. Let's go back to what have I done wrong there. Oh, 80. We need to multiply it by 80. As we go, multiplied by 80. There we go. That's a bit better. So that's going to indicate to us the strength of the wind as well. So we're going to set that now over to our material parameter collection again. So let's go back to our wind controller. And we also want to go into our MPC wind again. This time we're going to do a scalar parameter. So let's go add a new scalar. And we're going to choose here strength. 
We'll do wind strength. Wind strength. And default value of 1. Save that. And now over my wind controller, I can do set scalar parameter value. Choose my collection for the wind. And then choose my parameter name, wind strength. And the parameter value can be my wind strength variable. File, save. Okay, so that's going across now to our NPC wind. I know our system has that link, that link already in there. We need to add the collection uh, parameter to the parameters list. So we click on plus, and we're going to search for wind. And we should see in here. Oh, wait, no, I've got to add it to the NPC wind. Now, in the NPC wind, at the moment, it's only got the wind direction in there. We need to add the other one. So what we can do is we can just click on the NPC wind and click on it again. I'll have to clear it first. There you go. And now it's going to add the wind strength to this as a value here too. Hit save and close this. We go back to our Niagara system, go to Niagara parameter collection, and now you should see wind strength as an option. You can add it into there. Now this is a float, and we already got a spawn rate in here as a float. So I'm going to go and change the spawn rate here to a multiplier float. Because this is going to be spawning at a rate of... Actually, no, we'll make this one the normal one. So we're going to do that one as wind strength. And then on the other one, the spawn rate here, we're going to do multiply float. And we're going to put in A as the wind strength. And the B value we're going to do is 0 0.75. So whatever value of the wind strength is, this will do like three quarters of the time. Compile, save this. So now the strength of our wind is also going to be controlled by our wind controller. I increase this up to maximum. You can see more wind. Bring it down to minimum. Little wind. And again, we can control direction of it. We can even make it go up. There we have it. We've got our wind system all complete. You can now change the, co the course of the wind as well as its strength very easily by just moving that wind controller around. And as I said, you can also tie it together with other material effects to create more like windy grass, trees, or anything else you like. Now, if you like this video and want to see more of my content early before anyone else and want to support the channel, go to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can find all my content available early from just $1 a month. There are lots of other benefits too, so do check it out. Thanks for watching, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.